This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by the Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Committed to advancing health and economic opportunity for all Virginians. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond and a very special welcome to the Secretary of Administration, Kiana Connor. We appreciate your being on very much. And before we ask you to tell viewers about what does the Secretary of Administration do, yeah. I think you have a very interesting life story that's brought you to this point. Um, not many people in the Secretary of Administration have had a PhD in organic <laughs> chemistry. and. But I think it's very interesting how you became involved in politics back in 2007, 2008. That's so uh, we won't go back to the Eastern Shore where your roots <laughs> are or to your Hampton University undergraduate, but tell, tell us about what really got you interested, not in more than just organic chemistry. Yeah. Well, I was in graduate school here in Richmond at VCU. Um, in 2007, there was a gentleman running for president that I thought was quite inspiring. I was actually running late to the lab one day, and I was watching CNN, and I heard president, uh, pre the presidential candidate at the time, Barack Obama, uh, kick off his campaign in Illinois. And it really just stirred a sense of community involvement. Um, and I decided that in my spare time, I wanted to help out. I wanted to make a difference. Um, it was more than just talking about change. It was actually putting your feet on the ground and, and doing that. So in the evenings, I would volunteer for the campaign and that just uh, uh, spurred a love for politics for me. And so then I worked my way through the Young Democrats and uh, the Henrico County Democratic Committee before joining Senator Warner on his reelection campaign in 2014. So that, that seven year period time, you still were involved in completing your PhD right. and I guess doing some teaching probably at VCU right. during, during that time and That's then right. made, made the, the big personal jump to, um, to leave the love of chemistry aside for at least for now and to, to move into working with Senator Warner mm -hmm. and, and your work with him was certainly in constituent affairs and yeah. other ways. So I first started working for the senator as political director on his re-election campaign. After that, I joined the official Senate office to kind of help him manage the state uh, to take on the outreach and oversee constituency services. After a year of doing that, um, he promoted me to state director. So I served as his primary ambassador, working with elected officials, um, keeping a pulse on policy initiatives and making sure that I was advocating on behalf of Virginians to the senator and then relaying back to our constituents our constituency has positions on issues. We were talking in our office about your somewhat unique background and everyone agreed that someone who really would be in the field of chemistry has got to be a detailed person. I am. And, and so that has served you well as you, as you made some career shifts. That's correct. That's correct. I may be too far in the details at times, I think my staff would say, but I think details are important. You know, we're working on right. big issues and we're here to serve the constituents and make sure that we're doing that effectively and efficiently. Um, so as Secretary of Administration, I definitely want to make sure that uh, every, every, every little detail matters in the big scheme of things. 
Um, so I stay on top of that. So let's move into some of the work that, that you're currently doing. I mean, general services, yes. building and grounds, that's, that's, right. that's got to be a got to be a major part of what you do. It is indeed. So as Secretary of Administration, I have general services. Um, I have VITA, Virginia Information Technology Agencies, the Department of Elections, uh, the Department of Human Resource Management and Compensation Board. So I see it really as the nuts and bolts of state government, keeping the lights on, making sure that the buildings are running effectively, um, that our policies are good for all Virginians, and that we are working to recruit a diverse and a talented state workforce. Um, so all those things that keep us functioning from day to day kind of fall under my secretariat. So we're, we're in the Pocahontas building. We are. Which is uh, a major shift for here around Capitol Square and for your agency, General Services. And what kind of feedback or impressions do you, have you received about the, the first year yeah. for the General Assembly to have their offices and their committees and everything meeting in this building? David, I don't have to tell you, I think there was a lot of nervous energy about yes. the move and we weren't quite sure if the building would be ready in time. But I think following this session, everyone was pleasantly surprised by how seamless the move was. I have to give a lot of thanks to our clerks who worked directly with Department of General Services to make sure that everything was in place and ready. This was also the first year that we live streamed committee hearings, yes. and that was a big yes, difference. Well, it was. Engaging folks from all over the Commonwealth so you didn't have to drive to Richmond to stay plugged in to what your legislators were doing. Um, so I think the transition was good. We plan to keep using this space as we're renovating other projects around Capitol Square. It will serve as swing space, so we'll be able to move people in, and it's already perfectly fitted for that. Well, even the, the streets around have, have had some impact. The, the sidewalk on one side and Bank Street and, and the changes that have been made there in order to accommodate the the hundreds, even the thousands of people who came here during the session. That's correct. That's correct. And we're hoping um, from a parking perspective that it did not impact too many people. But I think having Bank Street closed off there was the best route with all of the foot traffic going back and forth from the Capitol to the building. Yes. So beyond general services, mm -hmm. then as you're thinking of all those nuts and bolts that yeah. you're working on, which which one comes to your mind as, as is another one that's really occupying a great deal of your time. They're all occupying a great deal of my time. <laughs> right. uh, but I would say the Department of Human Resource Management, mm -hmm. you know, the governor wants to make sure that our state workforce reflects all of Virginia. And we want to make sure that uh, we are offering competitive benefits to entice millennials and others to engage in the state workforce. Virginia is a great place to work and live, and we want to make sure that we're offering great opportunities. Um, right now, we are. Uh, looking at ways to retain those people who are in service for less than five years. It's hard to compete with the private sector, but we want to make sure that people understand working in the pub public sector and doing good um, is well worth their while. So some of the employment also That's correct. comes in where someone, I'm sure some of our viewers maybe have filled out a s application for a state position or something, so that's it comes into that. But, into that agency before it then goes to? So for DHRM, we have a job portal on their website, but the actual hiring of positions are decentralized out to agencies. So we serve as the portal for you to find out where all that information is, and then we ship it out to the individual agency. Now, compensation board, if someone's looking at, on your website yes. and, and, and don't, doesn't dig into the nuts and bolts on that, they'd be wondering, what, what is the compensation board yeah. in Virginia? So a lot of people don't know, but uh, the state government does a certain appropriation for localities and constitutional officers around the Commonwealth. So that's, common, that's Commonwealth attorneys, clerks, treasurers, sheriffs. Um, the compensation board helps set their budget each year. Um, so it's a very small office, but a powerful office, and we work with all city and counties across the state. And elections. Yes. And Virginia has elections Every upon elections year. and upon elections, and some in the summer, in November, and right. special elections. 
so that's that's got to be something else that takes time yes there you know unlike other states we never get a break here but it's a good thing right it keeps our process going so we have a special election and i mean a primary in june and then the general election in november this year midterm elections and there's a lot in the news right now about cybersecurity. but i would say that i think the department of elections has done a great job staying above the the curve here and maintaining um, secure elections. So I think we can all have confidence in our electoral process here in Virginia. Yeah, if someone wa watches anything about national news, no matter if they're watching it on a channel that's to the right or the left or yeah. one that's trying to be in the center, there's, there's certainly news about efforts that have been made and, and no doubt still will be made by any number of parties or other nations to try to impact the Virginia mm -hmm. elections, I mean, not just Virginia, but nationwide. Yeah. And, and keeping that secure has got to be a, a critical it's a, issue. It's a critical issue, and we partner with our federal agencies, right? The Department of Human, um, Homeland Security and the FBI works very closely with uh, VITA as well as the Department of Elections. I would say under Governor McAuliffe, Virginia got rid of all electronic voting machines. So there is a, now a paper trail, so we can always do an audit to make sure um, that the votes are accurate. And there was something in the news just very recently about your Department of Elections coming up with a even a, a more attractive or slightly different <laughs> ballot that's and, and one maybe that's that should hopefully prevent yes the, what occurred in one of the house districts yeah. yeah well in Virginia we say every vote counts and yes. we saw that this past um, November so the Department of Elections came out with new policies to change our ballot while we want to make it more attractive the the core of that was to make it more right. user friendly right. and to provide instructions so that hopefully um, we don't get too many more ballots that are in dispute on whether a voter was going for one candidate or another. Right. So those instructions should be a little bit more explicit and hopefully help prevent a very tight election that we just previously saw. Yeah, now twice you've mentioned VITA. Yes. So tell us about that. Yeah, uh, VITA is, uh, manages all of the, the Commonwealth's IT infrastructure. Um, and we just had a big change this past Monday. Uh, the Commonwealth executive the state agencies transitioned from Microsoft Exchange to Gmail. So we're constantly looking for ways to develop a new model that will meet the needs of the Commonwealth from an IT perspective better. So I'm happy to say that that went smooth and we look forward to you know looking and innovating as time goes on. Secretary Connor, we thank you very much for this brief introduction that you've made to our viewers about your background, about what you're doing, and we certainly look forward to having you back on This Week in Richmond to talk about how things are progressing through the time that you're in service, and then toward the end, then we'll find out what's next for you. Is it running for office, or what is it? <laughs> uh, well, I'm three months in here, so <laughs> looking right. forward it, to it's just- It's too soon to ask. Too, way too yeah, soon yeah, to okay. ask. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you for your time, David. Thank you. Welcome back to This Week in Richmond, and a very special welcome back again, too, to Colonel Steve Pike. And I think our viewers can see Colonel Pike by what they're looking at here, the Division of Capitol Police, the Commonwealth of Virginia, 1618-2018, 400 years. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. And so uh, tell us what's what you would like to about Capitol Police and particularly about this 400th year. Well, David, I appreciate you having me back again this year and we're very excited. Uh, we've started the year off celebrating our 400th anniversary. Uh, we were very fortunate to have the Senate uh, of Virginia and the House of Delegates do a resolution yes. for the agency and, and we're able to have a center aisle presentation with that. That was very exciting and, and uh, we had three of the previous uh, former police chiefs were there as well. So it was a great day for us, very exciting. Uh, we have other activities that we have uh, lined up for the year. We also had our Honor Guard uh, participate in one of the VCU, uh, Rhode Island. It was a live broadcast basketball game. Uh, we're also going to be out at NASCAR at uh, Richmond Raceway in April on the 21st. And our Honor Guard will be there too, uh, uh, doing the colors uh, for the beginning of the race. So. Um, uh, uh, later this year in the fall, we're going to have the extension in the Capitol 
will be set up with some uh, great historical displays about Capitol Police, and uh, we're very excited. We, we have a lot of very interesting uh, programs this year. Well, you have a, a good career, an interesting career, starting with Game and Inland Fisheries, and then with Capitol Police, and, and then being in the position, the head of Capitol Police since 2011. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been, uh, it's been uh, started in law enforcement in 1988, and uh, so, almost 30 years later here at the Capitol and and what a great agency to be part of uh, you know we'll trace our roots back to 1618 in Jamestown um, and you know we've we've been here at, and, and protected the seat of government in Jamestown Williamsburg and now here at Richmond and it's something that we take uh, uh, great pride in doing quite recently there were some of the your vehicles were up in front of the Capitol which is kind of an unusual place and yes, as sir. we observed it we had to get closer to see what was happening and talk to some of your officers there and and know that, know that police departments are accredited and knew that you had a display there of, of a variety of vehicles and other equipment to be checked out in that process so uh, it, was, it was a very interesting scene there in, in front of the Capitol. Well we're very proud uh, to be a state accredited agency and through the Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commission uh, we go through a, a, a reaccreditation assessment every four years. So a team of uh, police officers come in that are, are senior and master assessors come in and look at all aspects of our agency from operations to administration. They look at our vehicles, uh, they, they check our, our canine units, uh, they look in our uh, policy manuals, uh, they do right along with the officers. So it's, uh, we're very proud to, to be one of uh, less than 100 agencies in the Commonwealth to have the state accreditation. So it's something we're very proud of. We work very hard. Uh, every employee uh, within Capitol Police is a, a huge uh, uh, component of that process. It takes all of us working together as a team to, to make that a very successful uh, three-day assessment. So they're here for three days, finishing up today. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm hoping uh, we'll get a, a very good report uh, once they get back. You know, this has been an interesting year, not just the 400th, but a year in which Bank Street changed significantly. Everyone has been down here, and maybe they saw it the first time. They said, what, what, it's blocked off. And, and then the, the perimeter around the front of the Pocahontas building that we're in right now, so that's, that's created some additional responsibilities, if not challenges, for Capitol Police. Well, you know, <clears throat> last year, Dave, when you and I met, we talked about the change the, yes. of, the, of the buildings and operational uh, changes that we'd have to put in place. And one of those very, uh, was very important to us is make a pedestrian plaza that was very safe for uh, the public and legislative members and, and school groups to be here at, at our Capitol and here at the legislative building. And so <clears throat> we worked hard to set that system in place. And just to share with you, you know, this year from January the 8th through March 25th, we keep a, a count of the pedestrian flow in and out of the building. And uh, as of March 25th, it was just over 176,000 people. Wait, wait a minute, 100, <clears throat> 176? Yes, sir, wow. 176. So as we talked about last year, the Pocahontas sits on basically a block to itself, surrounded by four streets. So it's very important for us to understand that pedestrian flow in and out of the building uh, through that period of time. So that pedestrian plaza was very critical in keeping the uh, uh, people safe walking across that block. And, and give you a comparison, last year at the General Assembly building, the old building, uh, in the 45-day session, we did just over 110,000 people in that flow in and out of the building. So we've seen a, definitely an increase uh, of people still coming here, and I think that speaks volumes to uh, more and more of the citizens of the Commonwealth being engaged in the legislative process. Yeah, even with the live streaming of committees, it hasn't really diminished the no, interest sir. that people have in being physically here. So that that's, if you do the math, as I was doing it in my head, even with the session being 15 days longer, still is, is a greater flow of, of traffic in, into this building. And as, as we saw that pedestrian mall area kind of develop, I, I thought it worked very well that there was never a time that it seemed like that it was, uh, it didn't seem as, as long a lines as sometimes you and I had seen at the General Assembly building that would stretch down past mm -hmm. Old City Hall on 
or over toward the Capitol, long lines of people coming in. So the officers in moving people into the building must have moved them in very, very quickly too. And you, you, you bring up a good point, and that was one of the things I, I was very, uh, very important for me to watch and monitor, and, and I didn't see the, the, the long lines like we saw last year. Right. And I think with the design of the building and some of the operational um, <clears throat> procedures that we put in place in the plaza helped cut those lines out. And so it allowed people to get into the buildings uh, quicker, but still go through our security screening process that we have established. Well, and, and like you say, the building on, on a block and by, uh, particularly on the exit side, people being able to exit on the bank street and then legislators and other staff coming in that way, it really, it had more, in a way it seemed like it had more access in points, although just two, two but, yes, sir. Than, than the old General Assembly building that's, that's coming down as we speak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot, of, a lot of construction here. Yes. Yes. So uh, 400 years, uh, I think I saw where you have a new class of recruits coming on. Yes, we had uh, <clears throat> seven officers that uh, graduated last fall. We got them through their additional field training program. Uh, and they got them ready for the session as it came in place. We have three uh, officers graduating tomorrow night at seven o'clock. And then we have another uh, five officers that will be starting the academy, which is 26 weeks. So uh, it's very exciting to see uh, new uh, folks come on board with the agency and they're excited to be part of a, a very historical uh, agency that we are. Uh, so we look, uh, as we look forward to you know, the, the rest of the year with the 1618, uh, again, I think the displays that we'll have in the uh, capital, uh, I think will be very interesting to the public. And Dave, we have a new website and I hope people will take oh, time to go yeah. to the website. Yes. We have a very, uh, very nice, informative uh, anniversary timeline. It takes you all the way back to 1618 and brings you through a series of many of the, the police chiefs and, and uh, commanders of the, at the time, the Public Guard, now the Capitol Police, up to, to you know, 2018. So there's a lot of great information. We're very uh, appreciative of VCU uh, and their partnership with us, with their history department and helping us uh, assemble a lot of this information. So we're trying to get uh, get it there to the website. We also have a, a first ever Twitter account. We're up with that <clears throat> the first of the year. Uh, we're putting a lot of information out on that too. So we'd encourage you know, uh, folks to sign up to Twitter and kind of follow what, what's happening excellent. here at the Capitol. Excellent, excellent. Now, when we had a conversation before on the air, on the show, I asked you then, what was the best part of your job? Want to, want to ask you that again, not to check and see if it's changed, but, but is, what, it's, it's multifaceted what you do, but what, what are some of the best parts? I'll make it plural. Yeah. You know, I really enjoy being with people. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the, the things that I truly enjoy is, again, walking through the Capitol complex. Uh, I, I stopped yesterday and talked to a family from upstate New York, uh, and they were here with their kids uh, to, to see the Capitol. And, and talked to a gentleman yesterday inside the Capitol from Canada, and he had a small uh, child with him who was a, a huge Thomas Jefferson fan. So having the ability to meet people from all the United States and the world is, is, is very rewarding to me. So uh, engaging uh, uh, the community here at the seat of government, uh, working for the executive branch, we work for the ju judicial you know, branch as well, and the legislatures. Uh, is is uh, the big component for us. So um, you're right. It's multifaceted, and uh, you know it's it's never a uh, never never the same thing each day. So you work for all those branches, but really, I guess technically, you're a, a legislative branch. We're a legislative yes, branch, right. uh, and I report to a group of uh, five individuals, the Legislative Support Commission. Mm -hmm. Well. I thank you very much for bringing these, and I, I would think that we'll probably see these in some other places around uh, when when Capitol Police are around, so that they will can can visualize that. Uh, now, on the vehicles that we see, is is there a horse that's uh, involved in that too? Well, you know, we're <clears throat> we're looking uh, uh, forward to trying to get in this partnership with Richmond. Uh, City Police Department and, and our mounting unit. I know they're very close in securing a new location for their stables. 
So we're kind of standing in the wings, uh, waiting for that to, to be finalized, and then we can proceed on with our uh, our unit as well. So that's uh, hopefully we can get that done this year. It'd be yes. be a great time to do it. Well, I think you even had a name. We, we had two names. Two names yeah. for the horses that, yeah. they, that comes about. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. We had the uh, House and Senate uh, each uh, selected a name, so we're waiting to, to, wait to see. Waiting to see. Colonel Pike, thank you very much for being on This Week in Richmond. We yes, look sir. forward to following your work and having you back on This Week in Richmond. Thank you, David. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by The Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Health Care Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you 